This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 555, How to Leverage Your Product to Discover New Growth Channels, by Zach Baligo with neilpatel.com. And I'm Dan, I am your host, and welcome back to Optimal Startup Daily, or thanks for joining us for the very first time if you're just discovering the podcast. This is the place where I read to you from some of the best blogs on entrepreneurship, and I do that every single day, including weekends and holidays. Now today I've got a post from a guest writer on Neil Patel's site, and I will tell you about Zach right after the reading. So for now, let's get to it as we start optimizing your life. How to Leverage Your Product to Discover New Growth Channels by Zach Baligo with neilpatel.com. If you've done any research on how to grow a tech business, you've probably come across a guy named Ryan Fuju. He has led growth at both About.me and Lyft. Recently, he gave a talk at the 500 Distro Conference where he discussed how to use products to grow through existing channels and find new ones. This post is a summary of his presentation. Take advantage of existing channels. When attempting to grow, you need to focus on your existing channels or create new channels. With your existing channels, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's often about taking a different approach or better aligning your product with the way people think about it. Product channel fit. We're all familiar with product market fit, which is reached when a product fits in a good market and can satisfy that market. Think of product channel fit as the same thing, just with growth channels instead of markets. Airbnb and Craigslist are a good example. In the early days, Airbnb had a high demand for places to stay, but low supply. Craigslist had the supply. Airbnb created a system to recruit these people to their platform and thereby found themselves a solid channel for growth. Three steps to achieve product channel fit. To get the right product channel fit, You need your product to align with growth channels. Here's an outline for how to do that. One, identify your growth channels. Use an analytics tool to identify which traffic sources consistently bring you customers. Attribution is a little more difficult on mobile, but a link referral tool like Tapstream may help provide clarity. Two, talk to your users. Find out why users share your product. Why did they do it? What benefit do they get out of it? Over time, you'll learn some of the fundamental reasons people want to share your product. Gaining this understanding is very important when you're building and optimizing your product. You can ask this during your customer development interviews. And three, build slash optimize your product. Once you've identified the channel you want to go after and you have thought and depth of understanding about why people want to share your product, you can take this information and apply it to your product. In talking to your users, you'll pick up some keywords and messaging they use. Use this same messaging in your product. Step-by-step example. After About.me was launched in 2010, the team noticed a lot of traffic was coming from Twitter. They looked at their data and saw some of it was from tweets, but much of it was from people putting About.me in their bio. They talked to their users and asked why they put About.me in their bio. The answer was simple. Twitter allows only one link in the bio. People have a lot of accounts on the web, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, GitHub, etc. And since they couldn't list them all in their bio, they used their about.me link, which puts all their information in one place. This led to a major discovery for the about.me growth team. They had found a product channel fit. The challenge then became what to do next. How could they grow this channel as fast as possible? Use case frequency. The first thing to think about when optimizing your product around a channel is the use case frequency of your product. If you have a product that has a high use case frequency, people use it a lot, you can put your CTAs to the growth channel at the end of the golden path. For example, Instagram is a high frequency product. Twitter and Facebook are growth channels for Instagram. Because of the high frequency, Instagram can put their CTAs, share on Facebook and Twitter buttons, at the end. About.me has a much lower frequency. It's generally a set it and forget it product. About.me has to place the CTAs during the onboarding process. They discovered the best way to do this was to have people sign up for About.me using the Twitter API. Once the user completes sign up, it automatically places their About.me profile link into their Twitter bio. Identify new growth channels. What makes your product unique is what helps you create new growth channels. 
Lyft differs from Uber in that it's used by a young crowd and many of the users have more than one passenger with them. Once Lyft found this out through customer surveys, they created a new channel called Free with Friends. The way it works is when a current Lyft customer calls for a Lyft and is riding with a friend who doesn't have a Lyft account, that ride is free. They first get a code and then the friend needs to download Lyft, sign up, put in their credit card information, and enter the code before the ride is over. This offer caused people to talk about Lyft with their friends, and it helped bring a lot of signups to Lyft. Uber has something similar called Split Your Fare. Dropbox has a system where a user can share a file with a friend. The friend is brought to Dropbox, discovers the value prop, and can sign up on the spot. Find your growth opportunity. Take a moment to think about one of your best users going through your golden path flow. Think about the places in your product where this user can interact with someone who is not a customer of yours. Where's the opportunity for them to interact with this outsider? After you have that, think about the mechanics of how you can get that user to interact with the outsider. Is it with an email, SMS, Facebook share? Next, think about the benefits each person gets. What's the benefit for the user inviting them? What's the benefit for the person on the receiving end? How can you align those two things? This is one of the best ways to discover a new channel. Take a step back, look at use cases, and figure out where there are opportunities for your customers to interact and share your product with people not using your product. One question to help narrow your focus. Ryan Fuju always asks his teammates and colleagues one question. If you talk to him about growth, he'll probably ask you as well. How does your product get better with each friend, coworker, who joins? If you can answer this, you'll be on your way to new channels and more growth in your product. You just listened to the post titled How to Leverage Your Product to Discover New Growth Channels by Zach Baligo with neilpatel.com. As a listener of this show, you know that you need the right team to make your business thrive. Indeed makes it easy to hire and build a team with the right skills to make your dreams a reality. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. I love that Indeed makes hiring all in one place so easy. Indeed helps star applicants to shine with over 135 assessment tests from cooking to coding. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash startup. Offer valid through April 30th. Go to indeed.com slash startup to claim your $75 credit before April 30th. Indeed.com slash startup. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. And thank you to Zach, who is a guest writer on Neil Patel's site. He likes marketing, finance, and learning about different businesses. And as for Neil Patel, whose blog this article comes from, he is very well-versed in online marketing. So even if you don't have an online business necessarily, you need a presence online and he can help you get more customers. Neil is all about generating more traffic and sales and he's got a proven track record as he's been named one of the top 10 marketers by Forbes. Entrepreneur Magazine says he created one of the 100 most brilliant companies. He was recognized as a top 100 entrepreneur under the age of 30 by President Obama and a top 100 entrepreneur under the age of 35 by the United Nations. And he has a bunch of free tools that are worth checking out on his site, which again, is neilpatel.com. So check out the site for a lot more. But that should do it for episode 555. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll be back with you again tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.